Hi, I'm Darren Ferrugia and welcome. So what I'm going to teach you today is that groove that you heard me play at the start of this video and it's basically a cha-cha-cha for the drum set and specifically for one drum, in this case it's the snare drum. So let me give you a bit of context here. Often as a jazz drummer, although I don't necessarily consider myself a jazz drummer per se, but I do a lot of jazz gigs and there are times when you have to play rhythms that are not just swing or are not strictly within the jazz or swing style. And so therefore you might get asked to play some Latin grooves or, you know, and I use the term Latin as, a, as an umbrella. So it could be Brazilian grooves or grooves from Cuba, etc., etc. But often I'll get asked to play a tune in the cha-cha style or the cha-cha-cha style. And so what I wanted to teach you was a cute little groove that I like playing in that style. It's fairly unobtrusive and it means you can play it just on your own without having other percussionists around. So what I'm going to do is break this groove down and explain to you exactly what it is that I'm doing. So typically in an Afro-Cuban ensemble playing a cha-cha-cha, the percussion instruments that you would hear would be a guiro, which is the, you know, the that that thing. And then there'll be a conga part. And there's also a timbali player that would be playing for the most part just quarter notes on a bell. So what I'm doing with this is I'm basically just distilling two parts. That is the guiro part and the conga part. So let's start with the guiro part first. So the way I'm replicating the guiro part is really just playing a buzz on the rim of the snare drum. And I'm doing that by just as if I were playing a buzz on the snare drum. But I'm doing that on the rim of the snare drum and I'm using the very end of the stick, the area just below the tip of the stick. And that's a little hard to get consistent at first. So do a little bit of practice with that. So what I would suggest that you practice is just playing quarter notes and just buzzing those. Now the first thing you'll notice is you don't get the same sustain on the rim as you would on a drum. So it just takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get it. Uh, it took me a little while to get this too. Now the rhythm of this is a quarter note and two eighth notes. The quarter note is buzzed and the eighth notes are just single hits on the rim. So the rhythm would be one, two and three, four and one, two and three, four and. That'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. My left hand is uh, replicating the conga part and in particular I'm replicating the slap on the conga with the uh, cross stick and then on beat four I play two eighth notes in the middle of the snare drum which replicate the high conga sound. So what I'll do is I'll just play the left hand part on the snare drum. So it's a slap on beat two and then two eighth notes on beat four. Um, you'll get it. It sounds like this. One, two, three. Four, one. One thing you'll notice that I'm doing here is I'm playing the and of one with the tip of the stick as I put the stick down on the drum. So it becomes a rhythmic thing because otherwise what tends to happen is you do this. One. And I'm trying to avoid that. So instead what I'm doing is this. One, two, Three, four, one. And it also replicates the sound of the palm hitting the conga. So if you want to check out some 
Latin rhythms played on percussion so you can get a better idea of how we translate that information onto the drum set, I would highly recommend you check out a channel by Michael Di Miranda. I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description below. So anyway, that's the left hand part. So what I'm going to do is put the right hand part and the left hand part together. So the right hand's playing the rim, the left hand's playing the cross stick and the middle of the drum. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Sometimes I like to add an additional cross stick on the and of three. That would sound like this. One, two, three, four. So I like to play that as a variation from time to time. Now what I've done to just kind of spice this groove up is I've added the left foot on all the upbeats. So my left foot is going one and two and three and four and. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play four bars of this without the hi-hat, then I'm gonna add the hi-hat so you can hear how it really just elevates this groove. Here we go, one, two, three, four. Generally what I like to do with the bass drum is follow the rhythm that the bass player is playing. Um, but at a very basic level, I might play the bass drum on the downbeat of beat one and then the and of beat two. And then we get this. One, two, three, four. Just remember that the bass drum is not as important, I, I don't think anyway. So whatever the bass player is playing, I just try to lock onto that rhythm and I might play that really lightly. So the bass drum is kind of fairly light. What I like to do occasionally is just throw in a two bar rhythm and that two bar rhythm involves playing the tom. And the tom in this case is repl replicating the lower conga drum. A one, two, three, four. Let me give you an example of that with the hi-hat playing the upbeats and the right hand playing the rim. One, two, three, four. So obviously now it's no longer a one drum cha-cha-cha. Now the other thing that you would have heard me play at the start of this is a very common role that timbali players play in cha-cha-cha and that role is called an abanico role. And it's a, a, a fill that timbalis play that starts on beat three. So on beat three we have a single hit. I should also say when I do that, I'm playing the tip of the stick sort of further towards the edge of the drum and I'm playing it as a rim shot because I'm really trying to replicate that timbali sound. So we've got that hit on beat three. Beat four is a roll. Now you can play this any number of ways. You can play it as a press roll. You could play it as an open roll or you can also play it as a triplet, in which case I like to play this as a 16th note triplet, uh, paradiddle diddle, right, left, right, right, left, left. Uh, here's the uh, variation where I play it as a press roll. This is the whole fill. So it's a hit on beat three, the roll on beat four, and then a hit on beat one. So we resolve the fill with a hit on beat one. So we got one, two. 
So you can use any of those uh, variations for the role part of this. If you want to download the PDF that goes along with this video, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below and that will have these variations on the type of role that we're talking about here. So let's uh, play the fill along with the groove. Here we go. One, two. Any fills that I play where I'm trying to replicate the timbali, I will play on the snare drum for the high timbali and then the low timbali would be the floor tom. One, two. So there you go, that's the one drum cha-cha-cha and that's really for any of you that might be going out and playing gigs, you know, whether it's a wedding band or a jazz group or any time you are required to play uh, a cha-cha-cha or, or a song in this style, it's a really nice creative way to replicate that sound. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, just hit that like button, thumbs up situation. If you haven't done so already, subscribe and remember to hit the notification bell so that you know when I've uploaded a video which is every week. So until next week have a great week and I'll see you all soon. Bye.